ജോഗ്രഫിറ്റ്രഫി So I thought that I I should go ahead with that. Well, Nafeel, you, your natural inclination has borne out. This is not your first attempt, is it? No, sir. This is third time. And the first time you missed the preliminary. Second time you got into the interview. Yes, sir. How many marks did you get in the interview? If I may ask you. So I got one seventy three. That's very good. I mean, that's good as they come. You probably can deserve a little more. You probably will get a little more this time. So that's not a problem. What do you think went wrong last time when you got one hundred seventy three but couldn't make the services? Ah. Uh, about the interview per se or no not the interview i'm only asking you that after getting 173 in the interview yes, you failed to make the cut why yes. did that happen uh sir primarily because my marks and my optional were not too good uh i i did not score very well in the paper one of my optional it was again geography it was again geography i i, I just made a, a few mistakes in the paper uh, out of panic and and probably i was not too well prepared for and that and uh, what were your marks in the essay uh, 131 sir this low a yeah. little low and ds sir one paper uh, I, i in generally in all the gs i did not get very good marks in in paper one i got 95 that's pretty low paper okay. two i got around 97 paper three i got I scored uh, pretty less 82 and paper four i got 101 So basically, your GS also has let you down very yes, badly. Yes, very much. Very badly. So this year, I hope there is no problem whatsoever. I've tried. Um, let's come to you. Been to Lucknow. You have studied in Lucknow in Lamart Bihar. Yes, sir. Tell me something about Claude Martin. Who was he? Sir Claude Martin was a French military man who had come to India uh, to serve the uh, French army in the beginning. However, in the middle of uh, the Carnatic Wars that were happening, and in the middle of the flux that India was in. Uh, in the in the late 18th century he decided to shift uh, to the british side he and he, then he came to lucknow he, he he served at the british residency there is a british residency in lucknow and then he made a lot of money and he was also associated with the nawabs of lucknow and so he built a la- vast fortune and uh, then he died and he left in his will uh, that a college be uh, his residence be converted into a college so eventually three uh, schools were ma- built for him since he had served in uh, some time in calcutta also so alla martinia was built there also alla martinia college was built in leon his uh, birthplace in uh, france and then uh, his main house that is referred to as constant were you a day scholar or a boarder i was a day scholar sir where did you stay in lucknow sir in butla palace colony butla palace butla palace colony butla palace colony butla palace colony Have you ever heard of a Butler Palace, uh, Butler Hotel, hostel also? Butler, sir, can you? Lucknow University. Yes, I I know about Lucknow University. So, what is this Butler named after? Butler Hostel, Butler Palace Colony. Sir, Butler was a lieutenant uh, governor of uh, the, uh, the. He was assistant to the British resident general in Lucknow to the court of. Uh, Nawab Abad because the Nawab Abad had signed uh, the. Who was the Nawab Abad then? You have mentioned the Nawabs of Abad before this also yes, in the context of uh, La Martin, yes, uh, Claude Martin. Yes, sir. Can you tell me something about who, who were the prominent Nawabs of Abad? Sir, the first Nawab Abad who was uh, who was born in Iran, uh, Saadat Ali, Saadat Khan Baranul Mulk. He was the one who established uh, the, the, the dynasty of uh, uh, Abads in Nawab uh, Abads uh, Nawabs. So it started in Lucknow. Yeah, uh, it started in Lucknow because earlier. The, Lucknow, are you sure it started in Lucknow? Sir. Actually, uh, Lucknow was ruled by the Sheikh Zadas, who were the representatives of the crown. He came to Lucknow. Which crown? Uh, he was he. Uh, the Sheikh Zadas started ruling Lucknow when Abad was made a separate province under Akbar. Uh, I mean, uh, under Akbar. So the Sanad to the Nawab of uh, Abad was by Akbar. So when when Akbar became the ruler, he reorganized the uh, provinces of India. One such province was Abad. 
and he gave the responsibility of ruling over to a ruler to a ruling dynasty called Sheikh Zadas. So, but when Muhammad Shah became the ruler, he sent Saadat Khan Baranul Mulk as his representative to replace Sheikh Zadas, and thus he. Uh, but Saadat Khan Baranul Mulk was not a native Indian. He was born in uh, Nishapur, Iran, and he had come to. Is there a connection between Faisalabad in Lucknow and the Nawabs from yeah, shifting their capital from Faisalabad to Lucknow? So initially, the Nawabs of Awadh ruled from uh, Faisalabad. In fact, uh, the the tomb of second uh, Nawab of Awadh um, is is referred to as Gulab Bari in uh, Faisalabad. So, but uh, Asafud Dawla, the greatest of the Nawabs, who built all the mo monuments in Lucknow, who was responsible for shifting the capital from Faisalabad to Lucknow, uh, he was he had some issue with his mother. He fought with his mother, and he decided to shift his capital to. Uh, Lucknow and from Who was the last Nawab of Lucknow? Sir so, Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. When when was he removed from his gaddi? Sir, so, in 1856 because of maladministration or the charges of maladministration. Who was Begum Hazrat Mahal? Sir, so, Begum Hazrat Mahal was his wife. Had he divorced Begum Hazrat Mahal? I am not aware of that. There is a book on Rani of Jhansi, a Rani and a Begum by Rudram Chu Mukherjee. Which makes it very clear that Hazrat Mahal had been was a Kaniz, was married, was divorced, and chose to fight the yes, sir. British afterwards when he had accepted exile and gone. I'll leave it at that. We should come back to Delhi now with Lucknow. You've already asked all the good good things about Delhi. Uh, you have done economics. So who is the chairman of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Committee at the moment? Uh, sir, Ma'am, Mr. Vivek Devroy. And uh, in terms of economy, what do you think would be the basic uh, economy of Delhi based on? And there's a lot of issue with the liquor also coming in and all. So what is the source of income for Delhi? Uh, Ma'am. Uh, economy, how, what is it based on? I mean, where does Delhi driven, generate revenue? Ma'am, I would say that it generally comes from the services sector of, of Delhi. Services sector. So, if uh, suppose I tell you that you have become the district, uh, the you rise to be a very senior chief secretary of Delhi, and I say explore the possibility of making Delhi the tourist destination of the country. What would you like to develop to make that a very vibrant economically uh, source of income, tourism in terms of tourism? Ma'am, Delhi already has a very good, uh, many, many tourist spaces, uh, tourist places. It already around. has enough. But there are a lot to, uh, there is, there are a lot of places that we so can So what explore. do we have at the moment in Delhi to see for tourism in terms of Delhi's uh, deep history, we have very monuments. vibrant political place? Ma'am, we have monuments ranging from the Sultanate, Sultanate uh, period, from some even say that we have a, uh, uh, monuments ranging from the... Uh, from the reign, from the reign of Prithviraj Chauhan, also. Um, Some even Kilara. say you are not aware of that. Some Kila Rai Pithoda, for okay, example, okay. In, in near Mehroli, was the old city that was built okay, by Prithviraj okay. Chauhan. And then we have uh, monuments from the Sultanate period. Then we have monuments from Mughal period. In fact, Delhi has been one of the capitals of the Mughals. Hmm. Uh, so the before it was the capital of the Mughals, was it a capital of any other empire? Ma'am. Among any them. any knowledge about the ancient ancient part of Delhi? Any any idea about the uh, pre uh, Prithviraj Chauhan period? Ma'am, it was uh, the 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 most I know is that the fact that it was called in the press. Uh, but I, is I, there any place where uh, scientific uh, research excavations have been done and found uh, connected to the ancient period? I'm not able to recall it right now. Okay, you're not aware of Purana Kila. Yes, ma'am, I, I am. Uh, is there any place in Delhi where we can, suppose I want to see about our history and culture, which is the place in Delhi where we can go to know about our, uh, you know, displays which connect us to our past, archaeologically, in terms of other, uh, you know, numismatically, epigraphy. Um, Do you I know think, any place in um, Delhi? I think Meroli can be a good place because there we have... Uh, iron pillar ranging from the time of uh, Gupta dynasty. Jain temples. The Jain temples. The, and it's a basically an observatory, yeah. Yes. So, is there any building where the government has promoted uh, introducing the people to art and culture through of our country? I believe the place would be National Museum. Yes. 
took very long. Why you want to be in the civil services? You can be a very good economist. The, the, the private sector can be a very paying job. Mama, I, I do I do know that, but uh, uh, I think that once you take up a course-based profession, for example, if I take up a job based on economics in private sector, I think I would not be able to explore different areas in which economics as a subject can be utilized. Uh, what civil services brings to the table is a diversity of job portfolios. And I believe that in any, in any situation, in any country, in any uh, department that I work, economics has become the life breath of everything today. Until unless you have money, and how do you utilize that money to, to bring out maximum benefit, to bring out maximum utility out of it, you would not be able to justify the work that has been given to you. So Wasn't I it always money is important, material uh, uh, sufficiency is very important and material uh, abundance is what drew people to India? Yes. So money was always there. Y yes ma'am, but I believe that uh, uh, the proper utilization of the same is also is essential. And I believe that if I, if I join civil services with economics as my portfolio, I think I might be able to bring a lot to so many different departments because whether it is education department, health department, a social welfare department, or tourism department, I think everything can be, I, my, my, uh, if, if at all I can use economics in all the different fields, I think that would add more interest and that would make me work in different sectors with my uh, course that I have studied in my college. Okay, uh, Yashart, now you have said that participating in live discussions on social audio apps like Twitter Spaces and Clubhouse is one of your hobbies. How is social media now perceived as a, one of the biggest threats to democracy? Social media is one of the most important things that has come to encompass our life today. So it presents threat to democracy in terms of uh, influencing voter decisions, spread of fake, fake news, Democracy becoming more electoral rather than participative because the discussions have become very polluted. Also, at the same time, use of social media to influence people to campaign for issues that, are, that may be endangering democracies. And also, social media has added as a weapon for certain, uh, I would say, for certain NGOs who carry out their anti-developmental work whether it is campaigning for anti, uh, for, for anti-developmental, uh, for, for campaigning against the developmental project or for the, those matters. So, so it has not informed the public opinion for them to be effective participants in democracy. So how should social media be regulated? I believe, sir, my, my personal view is that since all these different companies, they operate from United States of America, most of them, barring the exception of Coup and others, I think when they become, when they come to India, their operation should be conducted, should be looked upon by a committee which has representatives from the government, from the private sector, and from other, other organizations which represent people from all political hues, whether it is people who are from the left wing, people who are from the right wing. Because what we are seeing in America is that a certain section seems to have some, le some level of dominance over what is being said or what is being uh, argued on social media. As a result of which, there are a lot of debates in the United Nations Senate where the Republican Party often talks about the fact that their voices have been silenced. So we can create a bipartisan group which can regulate social media. No, but uh, in the sense that in terms of they will monitor the content and ensure that uh, yes. right-wing voices are also heard, is that what you're trying to say? No, sir. I think every voice should be heard. Uh, it's just that a perception should not be created that Twitter is for certain ideological section and it is not for certain other ideological section. Okay, uh, you must have heard that, you know, now even terrorists are using social media for recruitment, etc. Yes, How can that be checked? So, I believe the responsibility lies with the social media, uh, the people who are responsible for running the social media, so that they run, they create algorithms who analyze without, who, an, who, who can analyze messages, which are being, no, without reading it, to, uh, they can create some artificial intelligence machines which can analyze messages, understand their tone and tenor, and what, they and what these messages are trying to indicate to create an algorithm again, which can delete these uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, permission, sir. I don't know whether you are not giving a very simplistic answer. Let's uh, take a concrete example of Meta or Facebook of Mark Zuckerberg. Yes, sir. The person himself who's owning that thing might have certain views which are 
uh, not desirable for democracy and the way you are trying to regulate it through a, a logarithm is uh, basically a fantasy that uh, somebody would anticipate all kinds of how, who decides what message is to be censored, obliterated, taken off, penalized, etc. There would be a basic issue what Ambassador Sorub was trying to raise, the issue of freedom of speech, freedom of expression and social media excluding certain voices. You started with a thing that certain people are using it for anti-developmental uh, debate. No, if you say all views should be there, the anti-developmental view should be there in social media as well. But what I'm raising is something different. But if there is somebody like Mark Zuckerberg who has taken on the American establishment in the First Amendment and the fundamental rights of the American to freedom of speech, and he believes that, no, I think I'll decide it. This is a commercial enterprise. He has suppressed within intra-departmental dissent there have been cases. So I don't know is if whether you are not making a very generalized idealistic statement that some algorithm, some artificial intelligence would uh, read encrypted mails. I think he's trying to, you know, the basic police methodology of, you know, using some keywords to... Yes, sir. Uh, some keywords to identify to whether say, the messages... But anyway, terrorists have become more sophisticated than that. But staying on the subject of terrorism, what is the CCIT? Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism. Why has it not been passed for you know, such a long time? So because of difference on the definition of who constitute a terrorist. Uh, certain uh, countries like um, the countries of the Middle East usually do not like the idea of what the terrorist is, is what is referred to is uh, in the Western media as uh, the terrorist of ISIS uh, or a terrorist of certain uh, Hezbollah, for example. Iran would not agree to the definition. While India is not in a position or India does not believe that there can be a difference between good terrorists and the bad terrorists. All terrorists must be included. So that this controversy over the definition of wh what is a terrorist or how do we define terrorists is behind the entire uh, stalemate uh, uh, about passing of Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism. Uh, should the uh, JCPOA with Iran be revived as the US is trying to do or Iran should be excluded uh, and penalized? So I believe that it should be revived because by bringing Iran to the table of uh, diplomacy and by bringing them into the mainstream, not only we, we will solve the issue of uh, strategic, geostrategic problems that are being, that are creating, that, that have been created between America and uh, Iran. It will also help America to rein in Hezbollah or to use the path of diplomacy to reduce the uh, missile strikes that have been done by Ira uh, Israel over... Uh, I mean... How Iran behaves, uh, you know, outside its country. I mean, the JCPOA is meant strictly to uh, basically bring Iran's nuclear program in line with IAEA and then remove some of the sanctions. Uh, that how will that influence how Iran is handling the Houthi rebellion in Yemen or uh, what it's doing with Hezbollah, etc. Sir, I believe that by get, getting JCP by getting Iran to uh, by including Iran in JCPOA. I think we would be able to bring them on the part of diplomacy and the relationships which, which, which are tantering from one extreme to the other between America and uh, Iran and Israel and Iran can be moderated to a certain extent. And by using the power of diplomacy, I believe that Iran can be uh, convinced of certain benefits that would be accruing to it if it reign in the other groups, for example, Houthis in Yemen or Hezbollah. At the same time, the release of oil in the global economy might help to calm down the oil prices also. Yashad, you don't write your surname? Yes, sir. Do you have a surname? Uh, my my father's surname is Singh, but he decided to give me a Shekhar surname. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, uh, many people drop the surname for a very good reason. But if uh, we come across 100 Aruns and 200 Anils, how do we distinguish one from the other? So, ma <laughs> I, I... Your name is unusual, so no problem. <laughs> But it, it's, a, it's a difficult task for those people who are born with those names. Yeah. Okay. You have not opted for I, IPS at all. Why? So last time when I get checked for medical, I had uh, color blindness. So they, they did not let me. Uh, oh, okay. All right. And uh, you, uh, one of your hobbies is watching web series. Which, is, which are the one, one or two you would recommend to us? Uh, sir... I think the one that I would recommend, which I haven't watched right now, but I, I, I'll be watching, is The Rocket Boys. It is the story of uh, Vikram Sarabhai and Homi Jahangir Baba, with certain uh, role played by APJ Abdul Kalam in the development of our nuclear and the space program of India. Okay. 
now the interview is over now about you're wearing a very uh, smart suit no doubt you i'm not sure about your shoes because the two pointed shoes are con- not considered formal when is your interview uh, 7th april so therefore don't bother about the shoes then because you uh, can't break into new shoes uh, oh, I, 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 if you have an alternative pair which is uh, has broader toes that is considered formal oxford well, I'll, I'll, I'll get you know, it changed because your the color of your suit is perfect now your tie the the back flap is longer oh, than that. yeah okay. you know so, okay. well, yes very you know that shows carelessness and and uh, secondly in any case the length of the tie should be touching your uh, the top of your belt okay? okay make sure make sure of that actually i'm not wearing a belt Yeah, whatever. But number one, you should be wearing yeah, the belt. Yeah, I, I will be wearing the Correct. belt for the accident. Otherwise, accident. also the length is uh, should be the touching the belt. Uh, now you were uh, you came in with both your uh, buttons of your jacket. Yes, sir. They, they were closed, right? Yes, sir. Now only the top button should be closed, not the second one, because the way you were struggling when sitting down, you were struggling with both the buttons. It looked like that you are uh, going to strip here. <laughs> now well, you have to sit down calmly quietly and gently and almost unnoticed you should uh, open your button with one hand and not a struggle uh, uh, you know they're taking off that was uh, too awkward as you will see in the video okay, so you avoid that and uh, answer is easy one top button only which is easy when you have when you have just sat down okay not in the middle of sitting down all eyes are on you and you are here struggling with your clothes Uh, that that's not good so otherwise you're very smart very ple- pleasant and on top of all that you're from my college so you have, you should make it without any question so do you have any question if you have any doubts you can clear them with yeah, us yeah if you have uh, otherwise uh, we, we are fine with you uh, also one more thing that i realized is that uh, in some question i was not too specific as sir said how do i bring specificity into answers That's a difficult one to answer. You know, my, my advice is that if you don't know the answer specific enough, don't fudge around and give a general answer. Say, I'm afraid I don't have the details. I can't give de- a detailed answer. I don't know, or preface it by saying I don't have the specific numbers, but this is what I conclude from what I know. You are, you. I I thought your interview was very satisfactory. You put up with, the, you I'm put up very well with pressure. and the, you you shouldn't get the feeling that you did not answer my questions satisfactorily you did very satisfactorily because this is not a test of as everybody says the chairman the mr swarup is not a test of your knowledge is a test of your personality how well you can cope with you know under pressure i think you did very well i have no problem no you are an outstanding candidate honestly you should do very very well just take a little more care of your sartorial appearance okay, i don't sir. think i mean the length of the tie Okay, sir. So, uh, actually, my father does my tie for me today. I had to do it for me. Oh, is your father going to be here? That that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> This is if your father has to do your tie. Why? This this is not acceptable. Answer. He is he is a very he makes a very good tie. So even though I can make a tie, he makes. No, a very you good can't. Tie. I mean, you I can't have tie. I never in my life have seen the. back flap hanging on yeah, my long. Yeah, long. It's it's a mistake. I, 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 and not only the longer reverse. Okay, okay, uh, sir. Correct. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, uh look at your daft 10 uh, times today uh, with your father and your uh, friends and identify potential questions out of it now i'm trying From, to as many as i can yes uh, if you can identify 100 questions you will be better prepared but okay. how did you not anticipate any questions on delhi's history i'm um, actually <laughs> i should have actually yeah. it was a mistake yes. yeah thank, thank you, you. thank you.